Hey, so today's lesson is on factoring polynomials um, where we only have variables. So there's only variables, there's no coefficients, so no big numbers in front of the variables. It's just variables. So we're going to take a look at the two examples that are in today's PowerPoint, the two examples. I'm kind of just going to walk you guys through them so you know exactly where the numbers are coming from so you can see how we got the answer. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to find the GCF. So we are going to be dividing by the GCF, so we have to find the GCF. So the first thing I'm gonna, gonna the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look at x, right? We have an x squared, and we have an x, and we know that that has a little invisible one in front. So I ask myself which one of these has a smaller exponent, the two or the one, and we know that the answer is the one, right? So that means that the x to the first power is going to be part of the GCF. You can put that one in if you want to. You don't need to. Um, but it, it really won't matter. So now we have to take a look at the y. We have a y squared and a y to the third. Same question. Which one has a smaller exponent? And the answer is y to the second. That's our GCF. It's the two, ter it's the two variables that have the smaller exponents. So what we're going to do is we're going to take x squared y squared plus x y to the third and do the same thing that we have been doing. We're going to divide by the GCF. I'm going to put that one in so it makes it a little easier when we are subtracting. So I'll put that one there, that one there and go from there. I'm going to just move down a little bit. Okay, so whenever we're factoring out a GCF, the GCF is always going to go on the outside of the parentheses. Please do not forget that. That's super important. And then our answer is going to go inside the parentheses. So here I'm going to subtract these exponents. 2 minus 1 is going to give us a 1. So this is going to be x to the first power. I'm not going to write the 1 though. Here we have a 2 minus 2, which is 0, so that means these just cancel out, plus 1 minus 1 is 0, so that's going to just cancel out, and then 3 minus 2 is 1, so just y. So I'm going to bring this a little closer, and that's the answer. It's x y squared times x plus y. One way to check your work, which we can do right now, is distribute out and see if that's what you started with. So let's take a second to distribute this out just to check our work. And you add the exponents of the same base. So x squared times, I'm sorry, x to the first times x to the first gives us x squared. And then that y squared kind of just tags along. Then we have plus, now the x, you can't really multiply it to anything to the second term, so same thing, it's just going to tag along in front. And then y squared times y gives us y to the first. I'm sorry, y to the third, to the third power. So now I'm going to just zoom out a little bit. Move that there. And just check, is that what we started with? Yes. So then we know this is our answer in factored form. Hopefully that helps you out a little bit. All right, we're going to take a look at another example. It's the second example in the PowerPoint. So in this case, we don't have both variables um, in the polynomial. So we have a y here and a y in the second term, but we don't have an x in both terms. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to find the GCF. And we're going to just look at the y's here. This one has a smaller exponent. It has that exponent of 1. Okay. Now, we cannot take an x out of this polynomial because x is not in both terms. If there was an x here, that would be fine, but there isn't, so we're not going to take anything out. So the GCF is just y. So what we're going to do is we're going to divide. I'm going to just rewrite this over here. And we're going to divide both of these terms by our GCF of y. I'm going to just fix that a little bit. Divide this, divide this by 
our GCF of y. Remember, the GCF always goes on the outside, and then after you divide, that goes on the inside. So y divided by y, they both have exponents of 1, so these would cancel out. So that means there's a 1 right there. Okay? Plus, now you can't divide x to the 4th and y, so you just bring down x to the 4th. And then y squared divided by y to the 1st, you subtract the exponents, that gives us y to the 1st. This is our answer. Quick way to check it, distribute it see what you get. So let's do that real quick. y times 1 is y plus bring down that x to the fourth. You can't multiply that with y. And then y times y is y squared, which is exactly what we started with. So we know that we're correct. This is correct. Okay, so this is probably the trickiest part, knowing when to write a 1. If something cancels out, that doesn't mean it just disappears. There's a 1 there, so you have to put that 1 there. All right, if you have any questions, you can always write them in the comments and let us know.